Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Christopher Richens of RBC Signals. Christopher, thank you for joining me. Tell me a little bit more about the company and its role in the marketplace. I'm happy to, thank you for the opportunity. So RBC Signals provides ground station infrastructure as a service to satellite operators around the world. Basically, we're making it easy to move data between satellites in space and the users on the ground who can get value from that data. Now, have you seen a change over the years about how that data is exchanged? What are the challenges? Yeah, so we're seeing a, a lot of new things coming into the market. The biggest challenge is the volume of data that needs to be moved. So there are more satellites being launched, and these satellites have greater communication capability. And as those satellites need to move those larger data volumes, it presents, uh, it presents a challenge in that the the data has to be transmitted uh, across multiple different locations around the world. Because the ground stations themselves that are receiving the data are geographically distributed, the satellites themselves have to be able to conduct operations across a lot of different areas. And so for a satellite operator, that means that they're having to manage licensing across a lot of different jurisdictions. They're having to manage uh, backhaul um, and data protection rights, cybersecurity, all sorts of things that normally may not have been a challenge before, particularly when you were a geostationary operator. And now that we're looking at non-geostationary constellations, low Earth orbiting constellations, that rather than being able to be served from just a couple of locations, they need to be served from dozens of locations around the world. It really presents a, a data distribution and reaggregation problem to be able to deliver that data to the end customer. Now this is quite a challenge isn't it? We hear a lot about these LEO constellations and everybody's talking about it. Not all are going to come to fruition but it creates a problem doesn't it? It does. Uh, there is a lot of speculation about how are all those satellites going to communicate. There is a lot of question about where are those ground stations going to be? How is the data going to be delivered? What does the terrestrial infrastructure look like that's going to support all of that? And I think a lot of those questions remain open. I think some of the, the leading mega constellation operators are already well down the road of establishing the ground infrastructure that's required, but many still have uh, a long way to go. And I think that there are some business models that RBC brings to the table that can help address some of those, uh, some of those problems. And, Namely, I draw an analog to the early days of wireless or cellular communication when every cell phone or every cellular operator wanted to build a, uh, a broad coverage network and that was a, a point of uh, a marketing or a differentiation who has the broadest network or who, who has the fastest network. And so they were building towers all over the country or all over the world trying to establish that, uh, that market uh, leadership. And what ended up happening was there was a lot of inefficiency because those towers Towers, while they might serve different customers, the towers themselves are very similar. You have a structure that has that's fed by backhaul and power, but if you have two on adjacent corners, that's a lot of redundant infrastructure that's actually common between them. And what the cellular industry did was they actually aggregated all of that together, and so you had companies that became tower management companies that would then lease space to the individual operators, and that allowed that common infrastructure to be shared bring efficiency to the entire industry and we see that there's a, that same consolidation needs to happen in satellite so that the the satellite ground receiving equipment becomes common it can be shared infrastructure and then lowering cost for all of the potential beneficiaries of those services it's a very congested market there's lots of competition why should customers come to you so the thing that RBC signals brings to the market it's flexibility number one and when we say flexibility that's across a lot of dimensions it's uh, the frequency bands that we support everything from VHF at the bottom all the way to optical at the at the highest end we can support uh, from the broadest network of ground stations in the world. We have over 70 antennas at over 50 locations around the world. And we're also the most cost-effective solution. Because of our model where we're leveraging the sharing economy to aggregate the excess capacity of existing infrastructure where we can, we're able to provide lowest cost options in the market to our customers. And the key sectors? Which particular sectors are showing the most interest? 
So uh, Earth observation is uh, is a dramatically growing segment of, of our market. We see uh, Internet of Things, so machine to machine constellations growing, and then without without question, the the largest growth is in the communication or uh, Leo constellation market. Now that said, we're also seeing some exciting new areas that are opening up that we think in the next five years are going to start to show real commercial promise, and that's in the the deep space or lunar sectors where we see commercial activity. Um, but also uh, government activity and other things that are going to drive commercial needs to be able to provide communication services. So the company is developing, it's, it's an interesting company, it's a, a new bold company, what are the key challenges moving forward? Yeah, so for us a key challenge is, is managing growth, so uh, we need to be aware of how the space industry can go through ebbs and flows in terms of its uh, its progress and because the industry is, is still sensitive to things like rocket failures where that can uh, delay launches and subsequent delays to revenue so we need to be prepared and manage cash but also we need to be able to continue to, to fuel growth so right now managing that growth in an, in an efficient way is something that we're really focused on how do we uh, strike that balance and so part of what we're doing right now is uh, we're actually investing in, in this time and we're going out and raising additional growth capital so we've gone through a period of really identifying new customers developing new customer segments with geostationary uh, customers, we're working with government customers, and as we've expanded those areas and expanded our service delivery teams, we also now need to raise additional growth capital to continue to uh, support the uh, the growth that we're seeing in those in those segments. So I think really just managing growth is our is our biggest challenge right now. Well, these are interesting times. Thank you for talking to me. It's my pleasure. Thank you.